Right, so one of the jobs for today is going to be mounting two solar panels on top of the high top. I've already been up and gave it a complete wash and a polish on the very top. I didn't bother cleaning the sides, but it's on the very top, it's sparkling clean, uh, fully washed, fully polished, waxed, and protected, ready to go. So I've got two panels here, uh, these are both 80 watt panels each, so when I have them combined going through the solar controller, it will give a total combined wattage of 160 watts. That should be plenty to top up the 200 amp hour leisure batteries that I'm going to have in there as well. Now because where I have already mounted the skylight, I'm going to have to put one either side. I did originally plan on having a 200 watt or higher panel. But because I've put the skylight right in the middle, the 200 and higher watt panels are generally around about 2 metres long. So the skylight there is just too far, like 2 in the middle. So I'm going to be having one panel behind, one panel in front. It took a while to actually find uh, two identical panels that would fit in front and behind. But I managed to get those two. So as I say, those two are 80 watts each. I've got the proper solar panel mounting brackets for them as well. They're already attached to this one. I just got to get the other ones attached to that panel as well. So I'm going to get the brackets mounted, get them lined up, get some holes drilled, and get them fitted. Right, so there's the brackets all ready and fitted for the solar panels. So that's them all ready, all ready to go. Uh, they're going to be mounted on and screwed through the high top, but I'm not going to be using the connectors that actually come with them. I'm just going to be chopping the ends off and routing them all through a waterproof junction box. I'm then going to seal that to the roof of the high top as well. Then I'm going to feed all the cables through that and in through the high top and get them connected up onto the solar controller with that. Uh, so I just found that's going to be the easiest, quickest way rather than having to buy loads more different chock connectors, uh, drilling big holes to get those through. Uh, so one of those should do nice and neatly. I'll just be able to chop the ends off like I have done there and just feed that straight through and uh, get them wired up when they're inside the van. So these are now ready to go up onto the roof. Right, so I'm just about to actually start fitting the solar panels. I've got all the brackets mounted onto the panels themselves. Uh, I've done a test fit uh, just to be sure that they are going to be fitting okay and pretty much where I want them. I'm going to drill a pilot hole first just to be sure that it's uh, going at the right place on the roof. Uh, once I've checked that and that's okay, I'll crack on and get the rest drilled and uh, get this first panel mounted. Right, so there's the first pilot hole for the solar panel through. Uh, that's plenty. I'll be able to get uh, a washer and a nut onto there as well. Obviously, I don't want to drill all the holes for the solar panel just in case we're going to be going into anywhere that's going to be more awkward or wouldn't be able to get the nuts through. But obviously, you just do one first hole just to make sure it's going to be fine. And that looks okay, so I should be able to crack on and get the rest fitted in. <laughs> There's all the holes drilled for this side. Uh, I'm going to just start threading the nuts through and be sure that they're all fine. I've already done a test pilot one for that one and that one fit okay. So again, just going to be doubly sure that these are all gone through fine. Then I'll do the other side and start getting the wires put through. Right, so you can see where the uh, bolts have come through this side come through in just the right place where I wanted them. They'll be able to be mountable and I should be able to put uh, some nice big washers on the underside just to be sure that there's not going to be any movement or anything. But they are in a nice position just where I wanted them so that's fine. I'm going to get up. Uh, I might actually secure these first just so the panel doesn't move. Then drill the other holes, get those secured and there's one of the two panels done. Right, I've just done a test drill just for the other four holes. Uh, that's gone through and again it's come through in a nice space underneath the roof so I'm going to drill these remaining three holes, get this uh, panel secured. I'm going to fill the holes with Sikaflex as well just to be sure because I don't want any leaks coming through and then that will be one panel in its final position. Right, so I'm just mounting the brackets on now. Everything's been test fitted and everything looks fine. Now I've sicker-flexed under the panels, around the holes and around the holes on the brackets just to try and be doubly sure. So then when the nuts go in, it should be getting a nice sicker-flex seal under the bracket and also around the nut as well. So that's why you can see bits of sicker-flex sticking through the hole. So then when the nut goes in, 
that's just going to disperse the sicker flex around the nut and give a nice watertight seal. So I'm going to get the rest of the nuts in place, mounted, secured, and that'll be the first panel in place. So that's the mounting supports for the first panel in place. Uh, you can see it's gone in between uh, the ribs, so the headlining should mount nicely in between. There should be no issues uh, with anything sticking down or anything. So that's one down. Just need to repeat the process and get the second panel mounted. Then I can get the cables ran down and connected to the cable I've got there for the controller. So crack on and see how we get on. So we're just going to do the fastenings for the solar panels. I'm just uh, holding the nuts while they're getting secured by my nephew underneath. So he's tightening, I'm securing, and uh, soon they'll be all sorted. Right, so that's both of the solar panels mounted and bolted through the high top to uh, big washers underneath. So they are not going anywhere. So now I'm just about to do the wiring. I've bought a, a waterproof IP65 junction box rather than getting all the Y and T pieces for the solar panels uh, because I've got two panels and they're both 12 volts they're 80 watts each so I want to be running 12 volts and 160 watts so to wire them you wire the positives together the negatives together and then run one cable down from each down through the roof into a solar controller so I'm going to wire I've already got the negatives wired together I'm going to put the positives together put them into the junction box at the bottom uh, wire the two additional wires and then there's an additional waterproof membrane gland at the bottom there so I'm going to drill a really small hole just big enough to fit the two wires through through the high top I'm going to poke the cables through there put them through the high top and uh, I'll have a wired in solar panel array right, so there's the cables fed through the roof that's uh, a really tight fit those cables aren't going anywhere anytime soon but the entire hole will get a full seal of Sikaflex all the way around just to be sure and those cables are still going to be set inside this waterproof box so there shouldn't really be any chance of any water getting in but it's going to get a liberal coating of Sikaflex just to be sure so I'm going to get these wired in and uh, ready for the controller right so that's the wiring complete that's the junction box ready to be sealed up and sealed down I'm just going to stick it down with Sikaflex uh, I've already put quite a bit underneath it just to make sure that the hole uh, where the cables are going through is fully sealed and tight. That's why I can see just a little bit sticking out there because I liberally coated all the way around the hole just to be sure uh, because I definitely don't want any leaks going through the roof. I'm also going to seal all the way around the box as well with Sikaflex all the way around uh, just to be sure because as I say it's better safe than sorry when you're drilling holes in the roof. So there's the cables coming through the roof line. I've just marked up which one's the positive, just because they're identical cables. And that's where the cables are going to be going down, down all the panel in, and they're going to be coming out for soil controller. That's the output cable for that. So I'm just going to wire these in and wire up the solar controller. Right, so all I've got to do now is just run the cabling from the solar panel into the solar panel controller then another set of wires coming out of the middle ones coming out of the controller and into the battery bank now these are going to be ran to double up the amperage so it's always going to be running on 12 volts but these are 210 amp batteries i'm going to double them up so in theory that should give 220 amp hours of battery and then with the solar panel constantly topping them up as well hopefully it should never run out of power so i'm going to get the wiring and cabling all sorted out that's for the uh, the solar controller i'm probably going to mount it just next to where i've got the uh, fuse panel there so it's probably just going to sit there on the wall run the cabling in and then i'll pick it up after it's all sorted right so that is the solar panel installation all complete now 
that's the solar controller wired in place there I've built myself a battery box just to hold the 200 amp leisure batteries that I've got I've connected those uh, so they have doubled up the amperage power whilst leaving the voltage the same so you go negative to negative positive to positive so that's effectively created a 220 amp hour battery because they're both 110 amp hours each as you can see there both exactly the same battery same make match uh, same batch totally matching batteries so it's going to be no issues with mis mismatching there as well so to go from the solar controller uh, when you're uh, having two batteries mounted together uh, you basically take a negative of one battery and a positive off the other and they then become the negative and positive terminals for the enlarged battery so any further power that's going to be coming off these batteries you always still want to be using the same positive that you've got any power going into and again the same with the negative as well so because I've got the solar controller coming off the negative of that battery and the positive off that one that's also the terminals that will be used to then feed the power over to my fuse box well, yep, that is the solar controller all in place to show it's working off the switch. I see I've got a solar switch there, it's currently turned on, and I've put it because uh, I don't want the solar uh, panels just keep constantly charging the van, especially when it's not going to be in use as well. So, as you can see there, it's running showing a fully charged 14.4 volts now, and you can see the little symbol there for the solar panel as well. So there's the solar panel symbol, that's your battery symbol, and then you've got a load out, so if you had a uh, radio or lights or anything, you could also put some connections on there, and that would just power that appliance while the power's coming through the solar panel. If there's not enough power going through, it'll just cut the power to that load. So if I just switch the switch off for the solar panel here, you'll see the symbol disappear and the battery voltage should drop down a bit. So you can see it's going down, the solar panel symbols disappeared there as well. So in effect, the solar controller now just becomes a battery voltage meter. So that's showing that the voltage in the battery is currently around about 13.8. That's split between the two batteries as well. And then if I switch the switch back on, you'll see the symbol reappear and the voltage should start to increase. So there we go, there it is a fully functioning, fully working, completely charging up solar panel control system. That's two 80 watt solar panels mounted together to create 160 watts in total. It's going through a 20 amp charge controller and then it's going down into 210 amp battery. So in effect I've got over 200 amp hours of battery power with a constant top up coming through the solar panels. And uh, there you go, it's uh, not really hard to set up to install, it's probably taken, because I'd split it off over quite a few days whilst doing other jobs as well, if I was to dedicate just an entire day to this install it would probably take probably maybe 4 or 5 hours, something like that. Uh, cost wise, you've got your cost of the solar panels, those cost me, uh, I think they're around about £70 each, so you're talking about £140 for the panels, another ten fifteen for the controller. And you've just got your cables and your wiring. So there you go, that is a fully wired in, fully working solar controller. Now I'm also going to make another video shortly showing how you can actually monitor the amount of power that the solar panels are generating. Uh, and it doesn't actually show on your general standard solar controllers, it'll just show the voltage that's going through uh, for the batteries. But I've got one of these here. So as I say, I'll make a separate video on this because this will sit in between the solar panels and the controller and it will actually display the amount of wattage and voltage and amperage that's being generated from the solar panels that's then getting passed into the solar controller. It's one of the best and cheapest ways I've found to be able to show exactly how much power is being generated by the solar panel. So I've a look at my channel, I'll have another video of this wired in, uh, probably shortly uploaded as well, and then I'll be able to show you exactly what you can monitor and uh, how nice and easy they are to install. So yeah, by all means have a look at my channel, I've got the, the full conversion of this van, uh, all the videos that I'm making for the conversion, they're all on there as well, so feel free to have a look, uh, subscribe, comment, like, all the usual YouTube stuff, and I hope you found the video useful. Cheers. Tap.